Right now we're riding Suzuki's 2018 GSX 250R. And uh, Suzuki says that this bike most closely aligns to the Katana family of sport bikes that were real popular back in, you know, the 80s and 90s. Air-cooled engines, a little bit more relaxed ergonomics, more affordable price tag, built for, for, you know, riding on the street. Those bikes weren't race bikes. Those things weren't built for competition like the GSX-Rs are. Those things were built for everyday riding. And that's what we have here with this 248cc GSX 250R. Now this is a really neat bike. I know, you know, probably right away you're going to be asking, well, why did Suzuki go with a 248cc parallel twin engine? Why didn't they do a 300? Why didn't they do a 400? Why didn't they do something bigger? And uh, Suzuki claims, American Suzuki, or actually Suzuki Motors of America, the, the U.S. distributor importer for Suzuki Japan, they say that this bike was made as a 250cc bike to accommodate all world markets. Even though it's only a 250cc class bike, you shouldn't knock it because it's actually a pretty neat bike. Uh, the engine's a lot more peppy than you would think. A lot more peppy than you would think. I thought this thing was gonna be a downright turd, but it actually has some get up and go. And part of the reason it has that get up and go is just the, the internal gear ratios and the final drive gearing. It's a little bit shorter. You know, you gotta remember, this thing tops out in sixth gear at, you know, 89 miles per hour, 88 miles per hour. That's as fast as it goes. And uh, I remember the 250 class Ninja from back in the day. That thing would go quite a bit faster just because it had taller gearing. But that taller gearing means that it takes it longer to get to that top speed, where this bike actually has pretty, pretty decent get up and go for a 250. You know, yeah, it's lacking the the torque and the outright power of the 300s, but I wouldn't say that it's bad by any means. You know, this bike costs $4,500 brand new, $4,500 brand new with 12 month warranty. I think it's a pretty incredible value. You know, this bike is less expensive than some mountain bikes, some pedal bikes, some bikes that don't even have internal combustion engines. I like that the ergonomics on it are, they're very well balanced. I'm six foot tall, 180 pounds, and this bike doesn't feel overly small to me. Yeah, sure, it's a, it's a small motorcycle, I mean, obviously, but it doesn't feel as cramped as you would think. It doesn't feel excessively miniature. I really like the balance. On the, on the ergonomics on this bike, how, how Suzuki was able to make it so it still fits bigger dudes. Seat's a little bit taller than some of the competition, but not so tall that you can't get your feet down at a stop, even if you're a shorter rider. Clip-ons are a little bit higher, but it has a nice arm bend to it, you know, and I really like how thin the bike is through the midsection. Yeah, the engine gets a little bit buzzy when you're accelerating, but I mean, it's a $4,500 bike. What do you expect? The, the engine vibration isn't off-putting to me. It kind of makes you feel like you're actually doing something. You're riding a motorcycle. You know, a lot of people who are first getting into, into motorcycling, they want to feel like they're riding. And having a little bit of engine vibration does just that. I think it's neat. This instrumentation on this GSX 250R, you know, a lot of times these budget bikes get, get get skimped down and they don't get the good stuff. But I mean, this instrumentation looks like it was pulled straight off of, you know, the GSX S 1000. Kind of resembles the GSX R 1000 instrument uh, panel too. It's really nice, really easy to read. All your stuff's there. It's got the trip meters. It's got fuel mileage. It's got a gear position indicator, which is really important if you're a new rider. We've averaged 57.4 MPGs, nearly 60 miles to a gallon on this thing. And we've been riding it everywhere, not riding it slow. I mean, you're riding this thing wide open throttle everywhere as fast as it can go. And 
We're still getting almost 60 miles to a gallon. That's pretty impressive. You know, this thing has a four gallon plus size fuel tank. You're gonna be able to go a long time on this on this bike. I think I went over 200 miles on the last fill up. So if you're looking for a bike that's not gonna cost you a whole heck of a lot of money in terms of fuel, this thing's gonna be a good option for you. And look, we're keeping up with traffic, no problem. Those guys are speeding, so we're kind of tucked in behind them a little bit. But yeah, no problems keeping up the traffic on this thing on the highway. You know, on the freeway, it's a different story. This thing kind of gets motored down, especially in California where everyone's driving 30 miles per hour faster than the speed limit. But if you ride in any other state where people actually adhere to the speed limit, you're probably gonna be okay on this bike. Suspensions, it's nice. It really absorbs the bumps well. A lot of times these small bikes get really softly sprung fork, really softly sprung shock, but I wouldn't say the suspension's overly soft on this bike. I think it's well dampened, dampened. I, I, it works good. You know, we haven't really bobbed on this thing through the canyons yet, but it doesn't feel so soft or pokey that you couldn't do it. I think it would be just fine. Mirrors are nice and big, good clear view of what's going on behind me. That's important in, in, a, in a bike designed for guys and girls who haven't ridden a lot. Brakes are pretty powerful, as you can see. We'll try to split these guys. Front disc brake, rear disc brake. And look, we whole shotted them on the 248cc single overhead cam. GSX 250R. See, this bike gets up and goes just fine. Hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear. You know, they're a little bit soft, but they still get the job done. This bike doesn't have ABS, so it's kind of good that the brakes are a little bit soft. You have a little bit of freedom when you're using the brakes. You don't have to worry about locking up or like having such a rigid amount of power that makes them hard to use. It's a really forgiving bike to ride. I really like the clutch lever too. It's got a cable actuated clutch that doesn't feel gimmicky. You know, it has a little bit of tension on it. it makes it feel like a real motorcycle and not a toy. You know, for $4,500, you would expect this bike to be a Pet Boys Walmart special, but it's not. Like, this is a real motorcycle. You know, to get that cost savings down, this motorcycle was actually assembled at Suzuki's uh, factory in China. So Suzuki China built this motorcycle. For a Chinese built product, the fit and finish on this bike is very high. You know, you wouldn't think that this bike is built in China. It's, the fit and finish is really good. The way the body panels are put together are really nice. Nice. All the, the, the fasteners that they use on this bike, they're, they're the same fasteners that you'd see on the you know, $15,000 motorcycles. Very nice. Attention to detail is very high. I mean, just looking at the paint, uh, this bike comes in, in white and black, and if you look at the paint, especially in black, you'll see some, some, some sparkle in there, some pearl sparkle finish. It's a really, really nice paint job. I mean, for $4,500, you get that kind of paint job. It's just it's astounding to me. Transmission shifts gears between each of its six cogs really well. No miss shifts, feels real precise. Again, this bike does not feel like a toy. It feels like a real motorcycle. Styling on this bike, I, I think the, the the Suzuki stylers, you know, I'm not always a fan of their of their styling methodology, but on this bike I am. This bike has really clean lines, really clean. Looks like a great bike. It looks like a big bike. You know, you have this thing sitting at a standstill in the parking lot. People don't think it's a 250cc bike. They think it's a real, you know, 600, 500, full-size bike. It's got the look. It's got the same tail light as the, same LED tail light as the GSXR 1000. Very similar, which looks cool. Halogen headlights, nice and bright at night. You know, it's not LED, but for $4,500, you can't expect it to be. But it works real good at night. I was surprised how, how adept this bike is at riding at night. That instrument cluster is gorgeous too. You can read it when the direct sound, you can read it at night, you can read it all the time. Looks great. You know, this bike has a 12 month warranty too. You know, Suzuki's, they're known for their reliability. All those Japanese companies are. So you're never probably, you're never gonna have problems with this thing, but you know, 12 month 
warranty is included standard. This bike weighs about 392, 393 pounds. Feels a lot lighter than, than that. Feels a lot lighter. Changes directions insanely effortlessly, almost like a moped, but still has some stability. Like I said, the suspension isn't pogo-y, it isn't too fast. It's dampened quite well. If you're not going racing and you're looking for an affordable, sporty street bike for, you know, your girlfriend, your wife, your son, your daughter, someone who just kind of getting into motorcycling, I wouldn't hesitate to get them this bike, especially if they're looking for something with that sport bike styling. The spike's got it. 